Okay, today we begin uh, our study of chapter 9, and we're going to, uh, in this chapter, talk about a, a different type of geometry uh, rather than the Euclidean geometry that we're accustomed to be talking about, uh, as in the last couple of chapters. We're going to talk about a geometry called hyperbolic geometry, and the distinction between these uh, is really just with a single axiom. So uh, in, this, in this Venn diagram here, we have the circle on the left representing the axioms for Euclidean geometry, and the circle on the right representing the axioms of hyperbolic geometry. And uh, there is considerable overlap between these two. In fact, there is only one axiom that is an axiom for Euclidean geometry, and that is the parallel postulate. And the parallel postulate uh, is this familiar um, rule or axiom that we've known for much uh, time. And if you have a point C that isn't on the line AB, then the parallel postulate says that in Euclidean geometry, there has to be exactly one line that passes through C that does not intersect AB. Uh, what we're going to do for hyperbolic geometry is just replace that with a different um, axiom that says something about lines passing through a point that don't intersect a given line. So for hyperbolic geometry, we're going to say, suppose we have a given line AB and some point C that's not on that line. Uh, hy the characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry says that there are more than one, there's more than one line that passes through C that do not intersect AB. Okay, so the parallel postulate says that there is exactly one line through C. The characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry says that there exists more than one line through C. So for uh, our first discussion of this uh, of this chapter, uh, we're going to talk about um, an axiom that we've discussed before called Pasha's axiom. And uh, the author of our textbook makes the statement that Pasha's axiom does not depend on the parallel postulate, and therefore we can assume that it's true uh, in the hyperbolic geometry, or more to the point, um, it can be assumed to be true in the absolute geometry, which is all of the things that can be proved from the axioms that are common to both hyperbolic and Euclidean geometry. Um, and so our, our first discussion is going to be about why, why should we think that Pasha's axiom is true, given that it's not stated in any of the axiom sets. Uh, it was merely discussed in the first chapter as something that um, is true about Euclidean geometry, and the textbook author now asserts that it's also true about hyperbolic geometry. And so uh, what we're going to do is, uh, in the first discussion, look at the statements of Hilbert's axioms. These are in Appendix 4. And we're going to say, you know, we're going to assume that these are the axioms that define our Euclidean geometry. And we're going to identify the axiom that is responsible for giving us this parallel postulate. And then we're going to find the other axioms, hopefully, uh, that are not the same axioms. Um, find any other axioms that would give us any indication that Pasha's axiom should be true. And, of course, your third post is going to be to comment on other people's um, posts, you know, chime in if you agree or disagree with what they're saying. If you uh, think that something needs to be clarified, you should ask that. Okay. So, uh, it, speaking of absolute geometry, there's actually something I had intended to say earlier. If you turn to page... Uh, oh, boy. Look in Appendix 3, and you'll find uh, 28 propositions that are... Um, that are true of Euclidean geometry, but are also true in hyperbolic geometry. So you'll find 28 propositions that can be proved from the axioms of the absolute geometry. Okay, and this is going to be very important because in this chapter we're going to be proving a lot of things, uh, we're going to be proving things about hyperbolic geometry, um, which is just different enough from Euclidean geometry to sort of make you question whether um, obvious facts about Euclidean geometry are still true in hyperbolic geometry. So you want to definitely become familiar with these 28 propositions of Euclid uh, in Appendix 3. And uh, these are all going to be theorems that you can invoke uh, in your proofs about hyperbolic geometry.